Researchers managed to revive 7,000-year-old algae that was under sediment in the Baltic Sea. This, of course, happened after a 46-year-old thousand worm was revived from permafrost in the Arctic. This is a different kind of resurrection science than when we're trying to bring back extinct animals. This is bringing back technically extinct animals, but directly, no cloning involved. This does give us a lot of really interesting information about how genetics have changed for contemporary critters on these planets. It's essentially a time capsule brought back to life, but it is controversial. There's a reason that things are revived that can only exist inside of protists. If we used human cells, that could result in something really bad happening. Either way, we're probably going to have to contend with it as permafrost melts. This is the part where I say we should be prepared for these events, but, you know, no one's gonna listen. Most of the time when we think about immortal critters, we think of our friends the tardigrades, the water bears. Apparently some people quantum entangled one. Tardigrades are known for being nearly immortal, and you do not want to have one as a pet. Do you know how these guys live? They have their little mouth parts that suck moisture out of cells of algae. If you had a dog-sized one, it would be doing that to people. Or fighting your Roomba. Either way, I don't think you actually want one of those little guys as pets. It would be terrifying. What all this research really demonstrates to us is that life is more tenacious than you think. Humans are a little bit self-centered because, yes, while we live for about a hundred years, if you're lucky, we have built this entire society and technology, but we are fragile. Now, there is this concept that the more things that you have in a body or a machine, the more stuff that can break down, so once you get more complicated, it's easier to fall apart. It works that way for other little critters, too. The really simple ones can be frozen indefinitely and come back to life 50,000 years later. They figured that out all on their own while we're still trying to master cryogenics. There's a decent chance that there's a little critter preserved somewhere on the planet today that will outlive humanity and maybe be revived by penguins or crows. My money's on raccoons, actually, inheriting the Earth. How about you?